Okay, it's 545. Um, I'd like to call the um, Select Board Board of Health meeting um, to um, on December 10th at 545 p.m. We are remote and I will have Trevor read the remote information. Trevor, you're you're still muted. Yep, <laughs> juggling things here. Okay, so uh, good evening, everybody. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT. Uh, remote meeting connections noted below. So you can dial in 312-626-6799 uh, uh, um, there are uh, several other numbers you can use as well. Um, the meeting ID is 620-007-8930. And the passcode, if needed, is 627-371. And um, there's also a link on our agenda. If you go to the Town of Deerfield's um, homepage, you'll see uh, on the right, kind of near a calendar, uh, a link to all of our meetings. And you can just pull up the agenda and click on the Zoom link and and you're joining us now that way, hopefully, so. Thank well, you, Trevor. Um, Trevor, can you pull up the first agenda sure. item, please? Sure, yep. Uh, so first agenda item, uh, we've called the meeting to or order. We had scheduled uh, appearances and hearings. Um, board, um, and so really our, our main, uh, we're skipping down a few to, to section four is the Board of Health reports um, announcements. So we're, we're on the frontier EDS, uh, um, emergency dispensing site is our EDS uh, group and the Frontier Athletics to discuss the athletics. Uh, and the second item on the agenda is COVID-19 updates. Uh, and then we'll have a discussion a bit later on about quarantine policy, which is updated from the state. Um, by default, um, we could just talk about this quarantine while we're waiting for more people to get on. Um, sure. The quarantine policy, the, we needed to vote to roll back from 14 days to the new guidance, which allows you to be tested out. Um, by default, Lisa had already been giving out, uh, Lisa White, our public health nurse, had started to already um, use those guidelines. So we just wanted to um, make sure we were consistent um, with what the state was saying. So um, I make a motion to adjust our 14 day quarantine period to the new regulations, the eight day and the 11th day, as well as the 14 day with no testing. Um, I'll second that motion. Yes, yeah, so it's consistent with DPH standards. Yep. Um, is there any further discussion? Uh, I have none. Okay. All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. So our now our quarantine um, regulations are consistent with the state and anyone that was confused, I um, apologize for that, but it came out before we had a posted meeting. Yep. yep. Um, I don't know, is Carl on yet? Is, is Carl on yet? We were gonna talk about athletics. I don't think I, so. Let me see. And Scott Dredge, um, the assistant principal, I think um, both of them are going to. Darius is on, and I don't see. If you're um, if you're calling in on a phone, you can use star six to mute yourself or unmute yourself. So I don't know who the phone numbers are. Um, there's a couple of people. Well, while we're waiting for Carl, um, I guess uh Darius if you since you're on would you like to just give us an update on what's happening with the, the schools and um what you did for um a decision on school um closure or, or not closure remote. going remote uh he may be trying to reach Carl too so um oh okay 
So a little bit. Are, um, well, we've had a huge uptick in COVID right. cases, and um, I think people are, I think people are, um, you know, um, pretty understanding that it's important that we pay attention and that we continue to wear masks. Um, yes, I think, uh, uh, so I'll add to that, it, and it may feel like a little bit of a whiplash, you know, we were just here on Friday, um, you know, all four towns, Board of Health got together and, you know, we, we looked at kind of the, the safety in our schools and we kind of felt at that point that um, we, we would come back to school on Monday and we've had a, you know, per, well, close to a full week of school, um, but over that time frame and, and we said at that time as everybody had concern we said at that time if we see a change um or if there's any reason that we feel like we don't have our hands around this completely that we would we would make another meeting and we would have a change and um and so i can that's kind of where we're at right now is that um just even in the last uh 48 to 24 hours the amount of um email pings with new cases that I'm getting through Board of Health is, um, it's staggering. It, it, it's heartbreaking. We've done so well for so long, um, you know, all through these last eight, nine, 10 months of, of this, uh, this area has done very, very well. And I'm not, I, I can't really say exactly what had caused this, you, whether it's Thanksgiving, you know, that kind of gut intuition we had uh, or not, um, or, you know, it's just uh, people, letting their guard down a bit, uh, or just, you know, bad luck. Uh, it, it has gotten really, um, a bit out of, um, out of reach. So we don't have a spot where we've got our hands around exactly. Um, I mean, we, we, we're obviously tracing everything, but they're coming in so fast and it's a lot of work to trace every one of these. Um, some are connected, some are not, you know, some have, you know, multiple possible, you know, exposures in, in one household. So it's getting a little bit more than um, we feel comfortable with at the moment. So we always said we would take a, take a pause and, and a regroup. And I guess the natural pause, you know, would be till, till, um, till we come back on, on January 4th. And that's, you know, we intend to do that until, you know, we see something again that changes our mind if we have to make an adjustment from there. Um, but it gives some people consistency. And I know how heartbreaking this is for a lot of parents. Um, you know, it, it, it's been a difficult decision both ways um, because it's very hard, you know, for people to manage their lives with, um, with all this change. And, um, but, you know, health comes first and and really until we, we're completely 100 percent sure that we're good um this is kind of the direction we think um you know ba based just, on darius is where we think we just going. want to make clear um that there's not transmission in the schools this is Correct. community spread yeah. and the numbers are just um escalating so fast we're on top of them we're tracing them um if there was any um opportunity uh, for spreading the schools, we certainly would have acted, but um, we're just worried at the, the rate they're coming in that we don't have a, uh, we, it will, it possibly could get out of hand. So taking a break uh, makes sense. Um, but also, um, I just want to say how wonderful the staff and the, and the um, teachers have been about maintaining the safety of the schools mm -hmm. and the responsibility um, that parents have taken so that they're, you know, so that they themselves have been um, safe with, and the children have been safe. Mm -hmm. um, the families, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I really worried all through October about Halloween and I was really concerned and people uh, came up with creative, um, good ways to celebrate Halloween and we had no bump. And, um, and, I, and I just want to make it clear that the families have been making a real effort to keep the schools safe. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's, this is not the families and it's not the schools that are not safe. It's just uh, community spread has been so widespread that we're just worried that it will get to the schools. And it, and it really has gotten, you know, when we, when we early on, when we set our metrics, you know, we set them you know, to a certain um, limit that we felt like if the community spread was at this number, then we would, we would evaluate and make a decision. And, and 
you know, quickly they've gotten in the last, you know, couple of days, they've, they've surpassed that number. So, you know, true to our word, you know, and Darius has been very good about monitoring this and, and reaching out and talking with the Board of Health constantly about, you know, where we're at and what the numbers are, you know, we have to be um, consistent with the policies that we've set. So, um, um, so with that, I, I would like, um, Meg, do you, can you share on your screen some of the new numbers? Were you able to get the new numbers for today that came out at five o'clock? Yes, um, I think, did I share, did it work? Yes, these, thank you. These, um, sorry, these are the, uh, the county numbers that were posted um, yesterday. Um, and you can see that Franklin County had for the, um, the case count in the last 14 days was 201 cases. Those are individual cases. Um, and the positivity for Franklin County based on the number of tests was at 3.35. Uh, the only county lower than us is Hampshire County. Um, I don't know where your volume is, but... So, and let me, um, I'll leave this up for a sec and then I can pull up. Carolyn, what else would you like me to pull up for data? No, I, I just, we have to, the number of tests, the number of tests is really important um, um, because the schools, our private schools have, have gone home. So there are gonna be less tests and um, the number of cases have gone way up. So our positivity rate is going to go up, I, you know, just to let people know about that. Um, yes. Deerfield and Academy, Eagle Brook School, and, and um, Northfield Mount Hermon were doing a tremendous amount of tests that kept our positivity rate fairly low and um, having them not doing the sheer number of tests, it does distort it a little bit. So. Um, we just have to be clear again on our, our on our data, and then we understand our data. But there certainly has been an increase in the number of cases. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. Um, is there other data you want me to show, Carolyn? Um, today's numbers. No, I don't. Numbers... I don't think so. Um, uh, unless someone has a question later on. We, we have our time constraint because we, the meeting can only go till uh, 6 um, 45. Um, so I want Darius, if uh, give the opportunity to Darius um, to speak uh, before we start talking about sports. Hi, um, I don't know well to speak. I mean, is it? The only thing I gotta say, and I think Trevor, you did a nice summary of it. I mean, it's a difficult call, and I know, and I've already received some feedback from parents that are very disappointed with the closure, mm -hmm. or not closure, remote, um, and because you know it does turn lives upside down. Um, you know, but I think as you said, um, you know, we built um, we built this back to school model based on um, trust and and how we're how we're handling these kind of things. Um, We've been very fortunate up to this time. The districts around us have not um, have not been open nearly as much as us, um, and or even been open at all. Um, I just want people to put that in perspective that um, while we uh, have taken measures to um, keep ourselves safe and stuff, we've been we've been because they blessed with good numbers, um, and also um, a teaching staff um, that has really um, allowed us to you know work with us to negotiate to get us all open to be. To make it all the way to late December, or if we're late yet, mid December, um, where there are other districts around us that haven't been able to open their doors. Um, so um, just kind of putting it out there, it's um, it's COVID. It's not fair, you know. And um, I, I talk about that as a as a parent who the worst part of making a decision. I had a conflict of interest because I want my kids in school, and my kids want to be in school, and they're probably at home teary. Um, and I'm not exaggerating at all um, that you know anytime we have to close school. So. Um, so, you know, it's taken seriously, um, and that's kind of where we're at. So, I, you know, I, it's a decision where nobody, I don't think either side's happy. Right. Um, but, or side, there shouldn't be sides, either um, opinion on it is happy. So, um, anyway, that's kind of, I guess, the overview. Thank you. Thank you, Darius. 
we do have a scheduled meeting for um, December 29th, and um, we'll look um, to look at the numbers at that point. Um, I see that Carl's on. Um, Carl, would you um, start off by giving us um, sort of a recap of what happened with uh, sports this fall um, and some of your observations? That would be very helpful, I think. Give us a little context. Carol, can I do a quick point of order? We did post this as a school committee meeting as well, so that oh, if they wanted okay. to take any action together. Um, yeah. and, and a general overview, we never had this situation before where we both kind of both committees have a level of authority over athletics and we want to work together to have a discussion tonight about athletics. So um, that's kind of the purpose of this. So those who are kind of watching and wondering what's going on with this unique format, um, um, both have a responsibility. Well, I think probably as an order, then um, point of order, then the school committee needs to um, call, call itself to order. Yeah. So Bob, can you click on your screen and call it to order, please? Bob, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, it's lower left, Bob, you click on it. There you go. Thank you, Bob. I'd like to call this joint meeting with uh, Frontier Regional School Committee with the Board of Health and the selectmen, uh, select people from, from Deerfield. Thank you, Bob. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, Carl, would you like to go ahead now? Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. How's it going? Um, if we haven't met, I'm Carl Sierra, the athletic director here at Frontier. So uh, this fall, I would say overall was successful. Um, without, I could talk for hours about the guidelines set forth by the MIA and the EEA, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk about some of the things we did specifically to kind of make sure we're in line with that and, and keep track of everything. Um, one of the biggest things is we, we kind of turned practices and games into um, a classroom in terms of taking attendance for everybody. So we always knew who was around. We kept track of that. If we had an away game, I got the roster from the coach, uh, sent it to the away athletic director. So they had a copy, I had a copy. So if anything happened, we, we were, could contact Trace. Um, we, those, all, the, all the rosters were shared with uh, the school nurses. So if anything came up in, turn to con in terms of contact tracing, they were able to, to to have everybody in the team. Um, we adjusted practices and games uh, a few times because of some of the other teams uh, waiting for negative test results, you know, being, um, what's the word, the, the phrase that uh, Darius taught me this year, uh, practicing an abundance of caution. Um, so he gave me the thumbs up. I'm learning. Uh, so anyways, so we did that and it seemed to, it went well. Uh, obviously sanitizer and wipes and all those kinds of things we have. We have a backpack sanitizer that the teams used, all those kinds of things. Um, within the groups for practices, kids were in their own little group um, that the coaches kept them separate. So if we had like boys soccer happening out back here, there were two groups, but at each end of the field away from each other. Um, field hockey, for example, at the start of practice, instead of just letting the kids kind of congregate, um, the coaches set up cones and those kids sat at the cones spaced out. Um, Cross country did the same kind of thing, um, broke into groups. Um, golf didn't use the, the bus, the little short white bus that we usually have. They, they for the most part, got rides to, to the course. So that helped in terms of the kids not being together. Um, other things, so, so field hockey, cross country and golf competed against other schools. Uh, volleyball, soccer and football just had practices a couple times a week within their groups. Um, volleyball, which was indoors, they did a really good job of so at the time we were using the gym as um, the internet cafe and they did a good job of moving the tables, having their practice, sanitizing everything afterwards and putting it all back with, with the backpack sanitizer. Um, again, they broke into groups, kept them all separate. They had one group per day. So there's no overlap of practicing in groups. Um, they kept the doors open in the gym. Uh, boys soccer, we move, usually they practice off campus, but because there's so many boys, we had them practice out back. Um, to cut down on the chance of, we typically have a bus that goes to Hurley He, and so we didn't have that because there would be too many boys on the bus. Um, and then Scott, if you want to quickly talk about football, I know you're there. The, the things you did for football, and then I'll a couple other things. Uh, sure. Um, 
football was deemed by the EA um, as a high risk sport. Um, so <laughs> meant we, we didn't have to uh, go beyond the uh, level school one committee. cohort. Um, school committee, school committee. The opportunity to get a to... Go ahead, Scott. I think whoever it was muted themselves. Okay. Um, so we, you know, like Carl said, we, we, um, because we're high risk and, and we're, we were not able to move beyond um, practice scenario. We met uh, twice a week um, and we did cohort practices by positional groups. Um, the beginning of practice, everyone lined up and sanitized. Um, face masks were on at all times. Um, did a lot of individual work and, and uh, small cohort group work. Um, and at the end of practice, um, sanitized and me and the coaches uh, had to wipe down the balls and we had our own backpack sprayer where we sprayed down uh, any other equipment that was used. Um, and I got to say that was successful. I think what helped was, you know, we were outside and we were socially distant. Um, so, you know, I, I was glad, I was grateful for the opportunity, um, you know, you know, having, just having the kids out there um, for their social emotional well being was very helpful. Um, so that, that's kind of how football went this fall. Um, um, Carl or Scott, did you have any um, thoughts on what could be improved um, in, in the original guidelines for the fall sports for safety reasons? Uh, you mean, if we were to do the fall over again, what would we do differently? Um, man, uh, that's hard to say. I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I feel like nothing went wrong really. So, you know, I'm happy with that. Um, things that would have made it easier and, and I know parents wouldn't want to hear this, but the, the, the fans thing that was, that certainly made me nervous getting more people together. Um, but, but um, to speak to that, I did have like a sign up thing and, and we basically people had to check in when they were coming to the field hockey or cross country and, and we live streamed everything. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, overall, we had a lot of kids doing stuff and there, there was, I mean, the numbers obviously were lower then. Um, so it, it, I, I really feel like it went as good as it could have gone. I actually had no complaints. I, um, all the complaints I had were related to, um, spectators in a, you know, the frontier league, uh, you know, the private league, not, not the not the public school league. And so I just want you to know, I appreciate everything you all did because we had no complaints and um, obviously no issues. So thank you very much. Um, do you want to start talking about what you, um, is there any questions from anybody first related to the fall sports? Did anyone have a question? Okay. Um, so I don't know how you want to start, but could you go over what you're proposing for the winter sports? either um, Scott or Carl, whoever wants to present that. Uh, sure. So first wrestling got moved to spring. So that's not something in question right now. Um, that will that will happen during like ba uh, baseball and softball. So that's kind of out of the proposal because the MIA said we can't do it. Um, I think the first thing I would say is we're going to continue all those things that worked in the fall in terms of tracking and rosters, um, sharing the rosters with the nurses, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in turn, basketball, I mean, we have basically the one gym for, you know, six teams. So th there certainly would be some alterations in terms of, um, you know, normally we would have right after school, the middle school teams both practicing on either side of the court with the, with the net down at the same time. So things like that will have to, I think, have to change numbers wise with, with the guidelines from the state. Um, it's, if there's too many people in the gym, if we have two teams practicing at the same time with the curtain down, so things like that will have to change. So I think that if we end up offering basketball, there will be less, um, basically practice time. Um, other things that we're talking with the Franklin County ADs in terms of, if we have varsity and JV games, we would have uh, home and away games at the same. The, so basically if we're playing Greenfield, uh, our boys might be home and the girls would be away against Greenfield in terms, so in terms of tracing or if anything, you know, goes wrong, it, we're just dealing with Greenfield from that day as opposed to Greenfield and another school. Um, 
other things. Um, the, the numbers. So um, Scott and I were talking about this today in terms of numbers on a roster. Right now, the um, MIA guidelines say you can have 15 players and three coaches per team. But we, we are thinking that it would make more sense to have 12 players on a team. Um, and then even for an away game, you only bring 10. So we have less people traveling to other places and just kind of keeping the numbers as low as we can in that sense while still having it. Um, other things. Another uh, one of the things that I want to mention in terms of uh, spectators at games. So one of the rules is if you're going to use the bleachers that are behind the, the bench, um, the fans would have to be 20 feet from the bench. The problem with that um, basically is that with our gym is big, but when we spread out the kids on the bench, um, it doesn't really make sense to use the bleachers. So I, one of the thoughts is we have chairs spread out. Like they, if you watch any college games lately, they have the chairs all spread out, which would basically take up that whole part of the gym. So we wouldn't even use those bleachers. So that cuts down the, the space for spectators. Um, like to half the gym right there. So uh, I know that the guidelines say for two fans per player. I mean, but I'm I'm not sure because then we have to store the the team that's not playing if it's varsity and JV. So that's one of the, that's a concern I would say. Um, we would still obviously um, stream as much as we can with FCAT. I talked to Kevin Murphy already, um, and then, so that's basketball. Skiing wise, um, we have a really small amount of kids for the ski team. There's only six kids. Um, I had my coach check in with them. Um, so like I, I think I said, maybe I didn't, um, there wouldn't be transportation that we would provide. So the parents would be responsible so that we wouldn't have the kids in a bus. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure where we stand with ski club, which used to help out with that, but that's kind of out of my domain. Um, so I don't, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say about hockey it, just because it's kind of, it's the Greenfield's thing. Um, I know Darius sent you guys the, the, the sheet with all the information about who they play and where they go and where the, 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 the schools kind of come from. It's basically all the, kids, all the schools in Franklin County. So um, if you have specific questions, I guess, about that document that Darius sent, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Or I, specific I, I, to interrupt yeah. you just because you give it, I mean, not everybody knows Falls Athletics. Some of this stuff is kind of sure. for you, it's a given. So once yep. you explain that we're in a co op, who we're with, who's on the team, where they practice, just kind of basically go through the sheet that you that you provided all the school community members with on that. I sure. think that might be helpful for people listening so that everybody's on this even playing field of information. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let me, I'm going to click on my other screen here to see it so I have to get it right. So for hockey, <clears throat> The teams that are involved in our boys co-op, uh, we have a boys and a girls. The boys co-op is with Greenfield. The schools that are involved, uh, Greenfield, Mahar, Athol, Franklin Tech, Pioneer, Smith Academy, Turners, and us. Um, typical opponents would be Agawam, Ludlow, Southwick, Chicopee, South Hadley, Chicopee Comp, Amherst, Belchertown. Um, the, I know right now all the other schools are still deciding and uh, like East Hampton and I believe Belchertown both have decided not to have hockey this, this winter. Um, so that in terms of boys, that's, you know, they would play everybody kind of in the Pioneer Valley as opposed to Franklin County, which would be the case for basketball. Um, and then the girls, let me look at that real quick. The girls is a new co-op. We were with Long Meadow previously, but they started a new co-op with Pope Francis. So there are, uh, students from Pope Francis, Amherst, Chicopee, Northampton, Hopkins, Pittsfield, and Taconic. Um, originally, they, they um, were going to play all across the state if this was the normal season. Um, but I, I just found out recently, today actually, from their coach that they're only going to play um, Central and Western Mass, which, um, so like Longmeadow, Shrewsbury, Algonquin, Auburn, Oakmont, and Lemonster, uh, to name a few. So their, their kind of bubble is still bigger than Franklin County, um, but not the entire state, which it was originally. Um, and so from what it looks like, the, well, last year we had 12 boys that participated uh, in the Greenfield Co-op. And, um, and this year there was one girl that had signed up for the girls co-op. How was that? Um, I just had a quick question. Um, is there... Um, a timeline for like a league decision we have to vote in or out. Um, 
to participate in any of these sports, Carl? Uh, good question. So all of our teams, except for the girls co-op is part of the PVIAC. The PVIAC just today um, moved the start date from January 4th to January 11th. Hold on, I'm gonna note my notes so I get this right. To January 11th. Um, yeah, so there's a little bit more space there. Currently the girls co-op team is set to start December 14th, but um, I'm, I'm under the understanding that that might get pushed back. It just hasn't officially yet from what the coach emailed me today. Um, so for everything except girls co-op hockey, the, the start date would be January 11th. But the, the start, that's wonderful news on the yep. start date, but is this, um, don't they have to have this vote ahead of time? Um, um, what do you mean? Like, yeah, there's certainly planning that I have to do and sign ups and all that kind of stuff, but you know. Um, so we ha So we don't, actually have to make a decision tonight? Um, no, I, I mean, I would, if the girls, the girls co-op is gonna start next Monday, I would say you'd have to decide about that um, unless somebody else knows any different about the date, but that's what I have for it. Um, okay. Yeah, so everything else, yes, yeah, so you could wait. And I could even have signups that are contingent on approval after it. That way people could sign up and I could start that coaches and I could start organizing the process before it's even approved. Okay. And Carl, and forgive me because for this clarity, because even me asking this clarity, when you give it the start date, is that start of competition or start of practice? Uh, the Both of those would be the start of practices. The competition start date for the girls would be just after New Year's and the um, all the other sports was January 21st would be competitions. Thank you. Um, is, have you any indication um, that EEA is coming out with some modifications tomorrow? That was. Um, yes, I did hear that rumor. Um, yeah, I did too, so, but I, have, I don't have any idea what they are. I just I didn't know if sure. you knew anything. No. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions for Carl? Keith has got his hand up. Yep. Yeah, so hand. just to clarify, vote all of our sports would be our vote except for hockey which is dependent upon what the co-op schools decide is that right that's a question for maybe i'm not sure darius maybe you can help with that one in terms of i think that maybe we, yeah. have to, we can decide what the kids can do but we can't decide about their program right correct so greenfield would have to is the host team so they would have to vote affirmative to have the team run for next this year for us to join their team so if they if their school committee votes to have hockey then we will join we they we would be invited in as the co-op in the other schools as well um so but we control as a you know our school committee controls where our, how our students participate in anything so so we would be basically voting whether or not we're going to be a part of the co-op this year so we're not we're not deciding whether or not the Greenfield can have a team. Greenfield's going to decide to have a team, and then we'll be deciding whether or not we'll be accepting their invitation to be part of the co-op. That does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure how you want to do this, Bob. Uh, I'm just saying my personal opinion is I want to support uh, moving ahead with sports. However, I feel uh, a little uncomfortable voting yes um, when we're just, um, you know, close, Darius just closed the schools down because of the number of cases. Um, so I'm wondering if we have a posted meeting, the boards, the four town boards of health on December 29th. Um, I'm wondering um, if, if we either vote that we support support the idea of sports going forward and then have a chance to review it on the 29th or say that we are going to vote a final decision on the 29th. I'm, I'm, I mean, I really hope that the schools could stay open one more week at least, um, but, but I understand. But could, I'm just not comfortable saying. Yes, Caitlin, go ahead. Hi, sorry, I look like a floating head. My lighting's not great. Um, 
<clears throat> I wanted to ask, um, and I do uh, support and recommend, you know, um, Darius's decision as far as the safety of the um, the school. Uh, if if that is the way the school boards feel and the school feels, um, the board of health did not vote on it, and that's fine. Um, as far as the metrics, now if the school and school boards feel that it is not safe for the kids and the staff to be educated together, I don't understand how it's safe to play basketball or how it's safe to play hockey. And I'm, I'm confused and, and I don't understand this. So I, I think that it careful consideration or how it's safe to have any, absolutely any spectators in the gym, if it is deemed safe to play basketball, any spectators watching, because um, the social distancing cannot happen. If you've got two teams plus uh, technically four teams, because you've got the next teams waiting, JV, uh, coaches, and everybody social distancing. Um, so I, I just find this to be mind blowing um, <laughs> that we can't educate our children, but, and I do believe sports are as important as far as social and emotional um, needs for our children. I, I, I did them my entire life up through high school um, and I, I do find them beyond important. So uh, I, I rank it right up there with them, but I don't rank it up there above in-person education. So I think that this needs very, very careful consideration. And um, that's my, my view on this. Thank you, Caitlin. I, I, um, this is Trevor. I just kind of wanted to say, I think this is what that's, you know, I'm really curious to, to hear from the um, school committee Frontier School Committee, what your thoughts are and, and, and have you deliberate, you know, the Board of Health wants to be here to support you and the school and the students. Um, so I, we we're hoping this, this meeting would be, um, you know, hear from athletics, what their plans are, and then hear from the, from, um, you know, anybody in the public, and then obviously the, the school committee and what your thoughts are and what your concerns are. And um, I don't know if we had to take a vote tonight, but we would, um, you know, just really gather that information, how it could be safe. And, and in light of, you know, obviously the, the, the schools kind of closing down at the moment or going remote. Um, I like to chime in. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to have a public comment here, but I know we probably have one, one speaker from one of the parents in the hockey team. I think we should listen to the, listen to a three or four minute, whatever they want to say. I asked for one parent, to speak for all of them in our meeting on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. um, listen to what they have to say. Um, they talked the other night. I think you guys need to listen to them. This is just for the hockey parents for the co-op and stuff. Okay. If Mindy, are you on? Carolyn? Yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. I'm here. Yeah. Go ahead, Jennifer. Um, I have a couple people with their hands up. So if you sure. know, just let that's me know how you want to do that, but um, um, that's fine. As long as we just have to be mindful of the time. That's all, everybody. I'm sorry. So, do you want to have? I'm sorry, this person's comment that just was asked to speak. Yes. Sure. Okay. I don't know who that was? Go ahead. Me. Go ahead, okay. Mindy. Hi. Hi, everybody. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Um. Actually, I do have some words to say, but first, I hope this is gonna work and I don't know, but um, I wanted to play a video first for people to watch. Um, you'll understand when you see the video, if that's okay. I'll just hold my phone up, okay? It's kind of weird, but okay. we're gonna see if this is gonna work. Um, okay. Let's see. I don't know if it's gonna work, everybody. Shoot. We don't have time. Uh, anyway, we don't have time. I'm sorry. 
It was my son. He made a video for you all to listen to, and he was trying to plead his case for hockey. Um, he's actually at a hockey game right now with many of the hockey players in the community. Um, so in a nutshell, all these boys, I think there's nine of us um, plus one girl. We have been playing hockey since July and we have gone out east, we have gone north, we have gone south, we've been to Hyannis, we have been everywhere. Um, I have three kids in hockey, I spend my weekends in hockey rinks. Um, they're clean, they're safe, they have strict guidelines. When I tell you strict, they are strict. Um, there's masks at all times, you have to put all your gear on outside in the freezing cold, it doesn't matter. Um, you're six feet apart at all times. Um, and these kids just want to play hockey. They just want to play sports. They, they, they just want to be out there. Um, as far as right now, currently, um, they're all on a team. And on that team, they are playing with the Greenfield players. They are playing with Belchertown players. They are playing with Amherst players. Agalom, Long Meadow, they, they're all right now on one team. Well, there's four teams and they're all playing this round robin right now. Um, so as far as the Pioneer Valley bubble, they already are in a bubble. They, they are in a bubble. They're gonna be playing the same kids in a couple months. Um, honestly, I don't know what else to say about it. I, I mean, you know, we could talk about low income families. We could talk about how, what are those kids gonna do? What are, how are those kids gonna play sports right now? I'm lucky, my husband works. He can stick Sam and my kids into a premier hockey league. Um, but I worry about the other kids. What are the other kids doing right now that need an outlet? I don't know if they have one. Um, so that I guess that's all I have to say is I will quote one of the hockey players and he says, let the boys play. So I think we should let the kids play. Thank you very thank much. You. I think we all we all support that. I mean, that's ultimately our goal. So thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else that wanted to speak really quickly? Yes. Um, Mike Prusak. Yeah, hi. Um, it's Mike Prusak. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the members of the school committee, this uh, superintendent Modesto and the Board of Health for allowing me and others to speak regarding this co-op hockey program. Um, with Tyler's efforts, Mass Government, our hockey clubs, USA Hockey, uh, Western Mass FMC ice ranks, protocols have been established, distributed, and successfully implemented, uh, allowing our student athletes to play the sport that they love and feel a sense of normalcy during these challenging times. This effort was not developed overnight and the organizations that are involved continue to enforce what's in place and in many instances have gone above and beyond the minimum safety requirements to ensure safe environments. Governor Baker's rollback to phase three, step one, still allows for competition with in-game modifications. Those modifications include 100% mask use during play, no multiple player scrums, social distancing on benches, one player allowed at a time in a penalty box, and referees are using electronic whistles. Off-ice modifications require players to dress outside, minus their skates, and only enter the rink 10 minutes before the start of a game. No hockey bags are allowed inside, one-way entrances and exits, and immediate skate removal after a game to facilitate a quick exit from the rink. Players undress outside as well. As Mindy kind of alluded to, these students... Uh, Student hockey players have been practicing or playing hockey since the rinks opened in June, actually. Starting at the end of August, these kids joined their fall programs. They traveled all over Mass, adhering to the set of standards put forth by the organizations we've been discussing. These club programs have already taken measures to continue play if these kids don't have high school programs available to them. That sounds great for the kids, but this does introduce more COVID risk and it, and it, it also uh, brings that to the school. They're still gonna go to school after they play in these games. The Western Mass bubble is far safer than the places they'd be traveling to in Central and Eastern Mass. High school hockey in Western Mass is a less risk for everybody. 
The rinks that we are talking about, Mindy also alluded to, are subject to a set of standards that they must adhere to or face closure. Mike, I, I hate to cut you off, but we, we have more conversation to have. I um, have one more small paragraph. Please just let okay. me finish because it's, it's, my, okay. it's my finish. Okay. But, COVID-19, I just want to say COVID-19 has changed all our lives and it's been hard to navigate. None of these decisions are easy for parents or organizations like yours. I've tried to convey to you that the people we as parents have put our trust in to develop these protocols have succeeded in making our game safe. If we felt it was unsafe, we wouldn't let our kids play. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. Again, I just want to emphasize that we've had no complaints related to um, hockey. Um, so thank you very much. And um, I honestly uh, um, applaud you for trying to get keep your kids safe. OK, um, so what we have to do is, is try to decide how we want to proceed forward. Um, like I said, personally, I feel like I want to um, support um, moving forward with um, having the kids participate, but I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable voting at this point when, when Darius had to um, close the schools today. So um, Bob, how do you wanna move forward on this? Well, it seems like none of the school committee members have talked yet tonight. Yeah, let's and I see think it. that's important. Um, we, we were together the other night and and we waited until tonight to do it. But if we have a, my personal opinion, if we have a 645 limit on what we're doing and we only have roughly 14 minutes, my personal opinion is I think we should put it off possibly to another meeting next week where we have more time to discuss what we're talking about. I think it's important. Um, I know we closed schools today and, and um, I'm not sure what the lady's name was that spoke earlier. She has a valid point if we're closing schools, why are we still having sports? But there again, I think it's important that we give our members time to talk. And I know it's gonna go past 645. So if it is, we should put it off till next week where we can have no time restraints and talk about it. But that's just me saying it. Well, um, if any of the other members or Trevor wants to say something. I just would like to hear from a few members if, if, if we could in the, in the time remaining. Yes, that would be really great. Meeting, but just it helps. I, I, to have both more. Keith and Phil have their um, hands up. Go uh, ahead, Damien. Just a quick statement. Uh, I, I don't know if the if the Frontier Committee has to leave at six forty five. So if the Board of Health has to close their meeting or different has to close their meeting, we don't necessarily have to close our meeting and continue the conversation. Hi, our but the 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 problem is is because. I have a ZBA meeting and I'm hosting this one. If somebody wants to take, I can give them the hosting rights because I let my son let me borrow his laptop. <laughs> so I'm running um, concurrent meetings tonight. So it's up to you, Carolyn. What you, what would you like to do? I'm, I'm, I feel like it's premature to make a, a decision for winter when it's, you know, at this point. No, I mean, I mean about continuing talking in favor of the kids. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to gather any more information tonight. Trevor, I don't know. It's up to you. I'm happy to take over, you know, um, just hosting if you if you want, because I, I just like to hear people talk and we don't have to really vote tonight. But it, but I, I still, you know, as long as people want to talk, I'd like to hear. OK, okay. So I'm making you uh, a co-host. You okay. are now a co-host, and um, if you do, you know how to put all the participants up on the right hand. Uh, so see. go down to the participants at the bottom. Yep, yep, I, I I can see that. Yep. And then, can you see all the hands on the right hand side, like all the all the fifty eight people that are here? Yes. Okay. Good. So you can. Uh, Olivia has the next one with the hands up. So appreciate if people would. Um, go on Trevor's call of um, when he he says. Can I just interrupt uh, for one second? Yeah, go is, ahead. Is all the select board people, the board to help people leaving us or just you, Jennifer? Just me. <laughs> okay. I just have to run another meeting at seven so I can stay. It's just that, yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah. As long as the board to help and the 
your guys are all the same. Board of Health, select people. As long as you're still here listening to all this. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, Jennifer, I don't, I don't see hands. Oh yeah, there they are. I got you. Yep. You got see it. it? Yep, okay. Sure. And then if you just hover over it, you can see where you can lower the hand after they finish speaking. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. But it's being recorded, and I'll deal okay. with it. Okay. Well, I'll do my best. Bear with me, everybody. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, yep. Thanks. Olivia. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Um, we had Phil and Keith and um, yep. Olivia. As far as I can see. Cover. So Phil, uh, I think ahead. Phil is next. Thanks, Trevor. So, um, you know, to me, the, one of the interesting things that I heard is sort of this it, dichotomy between, uh, you know, d if school has to close, do sports have to close as well? And to, to me, those are, that's kind of the issue that I'd like to hear, you know, metrics brought to bear and, a, you know, a, a, an, a, an objective decision-making basis. Um, so, I mean, I, I'd be interested in hearing from, uh, you know, I don't want to put, um, you know, Nurse Meg on the spot, but, uh, you know, somebody from the, from the strictly health board of, you know, strictly from the health perspective uh, about the relative metrics involved and can, can, you know, can the same set of metrics, you know, uh, be I used to say Phil, I think what you're talking about is originally what we had um, put together this summer um, to, to open schools, what were the, the bars that we needed to um, make sure that we felt were safe. I think we've all matured through the pandemic right. and right. we feel um, pretty comfortable that there is contact tracing, we're being on top of contact tracing and that even though the metrics are higher um, and that's yes. where people are comfortable, there is not, there is no transmission in the schools and therefore really they need to be adjusted because you have to look, even if we had, if we had one case in the school or two cases or three cases, the, the, the metrics wouldn't be met, but we would close school down because it's not appropriate. There would be transmission happening. So I, I think we've got to figure out some kind of metrics that are going to be um, re reflective of what's really happening in the schools. And, and I can certainly understand everyone being nervous about the numbers that are coming in and that maybe we do need to be a little bit calm, uh, you know, take a break to be calm, stabilize those numbers. But, you know, I really would have probably kept school open another week um, unless the numbers kept going up. So, so anyway, it's so, so then you know, I guess the, the other point too is that you know, to, to me, I, I, I would hope that we're not like singling out any specific sports at this point. That that we're, we're, we're sort of looking at an all sports or no sports dichotomy, yes. right? Yes. It, so I believe I mean, so. The only the only thing that um, if since the date for the June, I mean for December fourteenth for. Um, the girls co-op, I mean, I'm willing to vote yes, um, just because I don't want to have that person not participate. Um, you know, so it's subject to review or something like that. I mean, if the numbers go kooky um, or something, but I, to turn, to make, to make that one person not be able to participate because their date is a is December 14th does not seem to be fair to me. Well, that's, all right. that's and, a and, and then, opinion. And then the, the, the last sort of part that is that, um, you know, I, I, th I think even though the decision, it's, it's more comfortable to make like the final decision later on, I, I, I'd like to take it to, to, to speak up for voicing support for going forward, like now in some type of formal vote, just because parents need, need to prepare. I mean, I know when when, when my daughter was on the Alpine ski team, it took me a full month to do ski tech prep and I still did a crap job. But um, so I think, yeah, I think, uh, you know, pa parents need that time to just to get their stuff in order for their kids. And so rather than have it completely up in the air. I'm okay with that too. As long as there's, we have a chance for a review, um, I guess is the way I'd put it. 
Well, and part part of me kind of feels like you know, and I don't want to jump in every time, but I just, uh, just wanted to say, part of me feels like you know, some sports are a little different than others. You know, when I think of uh, a bunch of kids in a gym playing basketball with spectators, is a lot different than you know somebody skiing down a mountain. Uh, just just for risk. Uh, I mean, maybe risk to health. <laughs> Probably uh, as far as injuring yourself might be a little worse skiing, but it just seems a little different and and. Um, so I don't know. That that's just a, a thought. So um, uh, let's see, Olivia. Uh, sure. I just had a few questions because I think I'm unclear about a few things that maybe I should be clear on, and I'm sorry. Um, okay. It's repeating, but when we vote, would we be voting all? Like uh, Phil was just saying, is it going to be? Like every sport can compete with other schools or only some of them can. And the reason I'm asking is um, because, you know, we had different met in the fall, different sports did different things. Some sports were, you know, just playing and my daughter played soccer and they had socially distant um, practices and they didn't play against other um, schools. So they didn't um, bring our Union 38 germs to other towns, you know, and they didn't bring it in, but a field hockey um decided to play and that's fine. I'm not saying they shouldn't have, I'm just saying there were different rules for different things for different sports, which could be totally fine. I just was unclear about what the vote would be, especially if we were gonna take it tonight. I would want to be really clear about what it is exactly that we're voting for so we can make sure we're all making the best decision um, that the metrics and our, um, what we feel is appropriate um, for the, the kids. Um, so I guess I need some clarity on that. I don't know if anyone. I can give you the clarity on that. You can decide how you want to do it. Um, and there's been a variety of different things that have happened in different um, school districts around us. Um, some of them have voted straight through all sports. Some have pulled certain sports out that they um, deemed higher risk or different situations in their community, you know. Um, so. So it's really up to the committee. I think Bill was kind of talking about, let's talk about all sports at once and then and decide how to move that forward. Um, I mean, I know when people are talking about, um, I know Greenfield last night and probably, you can probably correct me on that, uh, the details of it, but they voted to move sports forward, but they're going to make a decision about competitions later. Um, I mean, not to follow the Greenfield's, you know, fine on that, but I, I mean, Turner's has already um, approved winter sports. Hopkins, it doesn't have hockey, I don't believe, is approved winter sports. Um, Tech has approved winter sports. Marhar has only done varsity at this time. Um, Mohawk just did skiing and tabled everything else. Um, and everybody else still has their meetings. Marhar Smith Academy, um, Pioneer, and Athol are still having additional meetings. Some of them are meeting tonight. So a lot of people are making are kind of in the same boat. So I, I, I can I can feel for you there um, um, within that. But since I have the floor, I'll keep going on my other side thing. I think there's a big, the big difference I'm going to put as, as my school leader had about me shutting down schools and I'll have it stated that way. Um, the, um, is that there's a diff the difference is choice um, in that athletics is a choice by students. And I guess that's one of the things that we're going to have to grapple with is what level of oversight do we give within the choice of, um, you know, everybody's doing different levels of risk within COVID and different families have different can take on different levels of risk based on their on their family structures and who they have in their family who's living in their homes, you know, they, you know those who are more vulnerable to COVID is, and um, that kind of thing. And so the one thing about athletics is there is a choice there, whereas school, um, it's not just about the kids, it's also about staff members and that kind of thing. And there's not a choice for all members of that. And so I think what people make very clear because, you know, it was not, I'm going back to my the self problem here, it was not an easy decision today. Because, but there are other things just and then just about students coming into the building. You know, we have staff members and other kind of things when we have an, a, you know, a, a large increase in, in, in numbers. So I think there's a little bit of difference there when we talk about athletics, um, just for people to consider. Also, just more thing, I don't know if I still have the floor. Um, but um, so, and I, this is probably oversimplifying things. And I don't mean any disrespect for to anybody who's playing or choosing to play um, sports in different parts of the, the state right now. But um, so what some of the, so 
hockey, for instance, I'm only singling them out because we were talking about them. And I heard um, Mindy say, uh, Mindy Knight say this on Tuesday, um, is that that they're already, that their groups are already a bubble, their teams are already a bubble. But when those teams, like we, we spent so much time keeping Frontier safe by saying, to asking our families not to be going out and doing things, not to be going to all of these parties, you know, don't go together with your family for Thanksgiving, you know, and then now we're considering sending teams, so 12 for basketball, 24 kids and five adults to another school to be inside their building with whatever HVAC they have um, for a few hours to play next to their players and then they're going to come back and go to school next to the students who didn't make the choice to behave you know to have those to, who thought those behaviors weren't as safe and I'm just I don't know I, I don't even know if there's a question really there I, I, I guess I'm just wanting to know how we plan athletically to keep those our students safe as they go into other schools um in places that we don't we spent so much time on HVAC right we mm -hmm. don't know HVAC numbers we don't know what they're doing in their schools to keep safe so I'm just wanting to keep kids in school I think in-person education is so important and I'm just really wanting to know how we plan to keep our athletes safe if they're going to be going out and doing things in other parts of the state. Thank you. Thank it's you. A tough question for sure. Um, so I'll just run down some, some other, uh, Judy Pierce. Yes. Um, I, I, I wasn't planning on addressing Olivia's point, but I think the point you made at the end, Olivia, about like the, you know, people participating in fall sports is a choice and that it affects the lack of choice that other people have who don't make the same choice. I mean, we kind of experienced it in the fall sports season. We absolutely experienced it in the fall sports season. And I think, you know, I think it just, I, I don't want to say it is what it is, but you know, it a little bit is what it is. Sorry to say it. Um, I also just want to make sure I understood practices for where the proposal is to accept sports only, I mean, the winter sports only as presented on the proposal and the protocols that exist in place. In particular, I think the concern is about um, fan attendance, like mm. people in person attendance for like, let's say basketball, for example. Um, and we, we have the opportunity to, to readdress that, right? At some point in the future, we're not two games yet. We're not gonna get to games until January. We're, what we're really talking about now is creating the opportunity specifically for that one person to participate in the girls hockey, but also for other students to begin practice for winter sports in January at a date that comes after the school closure date that was just established for Frontier. Did I understand that correctly? I think you're right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure I got it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Let's see, um, uh, mm -hmm. Damien Fasna. Okay, you got me? Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't really necessarily have any questions, uh, nor maybe anything else to add other than just my opinion. Trevor, you were looking for school committees to, uh, yeah. to talk, um, and I like to talk, so <laughs> yeah. um, I un un unmuted myself here. Um, I, I think this is a really tough uh, position to be in. Um, I, I think the optics probably do look bad where school is being closed. Um, but here we are talking about sports. But on the flip side, um, you know, who am I? I'm not a medical person. And I, you know, I, I don't know really any guidance to go on other than the Board of Health with their recommendations. And Caroline, you're, you're, uh, advocating to move forward with sports, which I think that that says a lot. And I think actually what Darius says, I think actually says a lot too. I mean, his decision with, with schools is very different from maybe where we are with sports because he has staff to look at, look after uh, students that, you know, have no other choice and, 
you know, uh, kids playing sports really are a, um, are a choice. And I think that actually says a lot. So, uh, you know, and I, and I know from my own daughter who plays soccer, she was very, very disappointed that the soccer season was canceled this year. And she did appreciate the, the practice that, uh, that happened and still doesn't understand why field hockey could be played and soccer couldn't, which is a whole nother, <laughs> which is a whole nother conversation, but I can feel for these kids that want to go play and do something with their peers. And I think, um, I guess also to advocate with Judy is saying, uh, you know, I, I don't know if we're necessarily making a decision right now that they will go play sports. We're only maybe just commenting or talking about preparing for that. Um, you know, uh, Deerfield Elementary was set to go to phase three on Monday and go four days a week. And my other daughter, my younger daughter was really excited to do that. And like, just like that, that got canceled. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I don't think by making a decision right now to move forward with sports is necessarily any indication that it's actually gonna happen. Um, it's really only just kind of planning for it. And I think if that helps parents, if it helps students to kind of have that in their, in their head and the excitement to go get out on the ice or to get on the court or whatever that is, but with the realization expectation that, yeah, you know what, come January 4th, come January 11th or whatever the date is, that might fall through, but at least we can plan for it might, I don't know, entice kids to, to have that hope. I, I don't know, that's my opinion. Trevor, you were looking for some, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really know. It is a, it is a hard decision, um, but, you know, I, I don't know. That's, I guess, where I stand or don't stand. I don't know. It's helpful. Thank you. Um, uh, Missy Novak. Uh, um, so I, I agree that there are sports that are different. And to be honest, if we had a vote on each sport, I think that skiing is kind of a no brainer. Like you probably cannot be more distant from people when you are on your own, uh, on a mountain. I, I think that that's, that's actually, <laughs> of these sports, this is kind of similar to cross country skiing for me, uh, cross country um, in terms of running. If we keep people separate from one another, I, I think skiing's pretty okay. But hockey, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know that is somewhat concerning about how the ventilations in the, rink, in the rinks are designed to help to keep the air uh, in the rink. That cold air seems to keep the viral particles lower and seems to make it so that these kids may be exposed to viruses viral particles yeah. for longer periods of time. We don't know. Um, we don't know all of this, but we do know that there are lots of cases that are popping up with that are, are related to hockey, and that makes me nervous in particular uh, about that. I know that there are a lot of strong feelings about that, but um, uh, I worry also about how we approach this and say, yeah, let's go ahead, let's plan for this, and then pull the plug later. I know that there's hope that gets put forward with that, but I think we also have to kind of set people up for some realistic expectations with how they behave now, especially considering people are, are currently involved in these sports, whether we approve them or not. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I, um... I see Christine's phone up uh, with her hand up. Um, there's a Lynn Roberts that would like to speak. Oh, Trevor. I'm sorry. Yes, I didn't see Lynn uh, at the top. So uh, go ahead. Uh, and then Keith, Keith keeps raising his hand too. So after um, Lynn, how about Keith? I'm going by ha uh, raising hands. So please, <laughs> if you want to speak, raise your hand. Uh, go ahead. So I was thinking about um, what you've all been talking about and so far as there are some sports that are a little easier to manage like skiing and more difficult to manage like hockey and kind of combining it with 
what Olivia said about how can we keep our athletes safe and how can we keep our families and other students safe when they come back into the school. So I don't even know that this is an option, but for the sports for the athletes, parts of sports that are considered a little bit more high risk, can we require mandate that they learn remotely? until their season is over. That is a thought and I don't have the answer for that. So Darius, I mean, that's an option. If they really want to play, that's great. Maybe but we need to keep everybody, everybody else safe. Yeah, and I think that was proposed by one of the, 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 one of the letters we received. Um, I don't know if we, I, I, I think this is a, I think this would, I'd have to run it by an attorney, but I, I, I perhaps, I, I think, you know, we're, you know, but it, are we limiting an educational offering? You know, if we deem that being in person is better than being remote, you know, I, 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 know, I'd have to figure it out. I think it's a great idea because it, it solves that problem. But is someone going to say, you can't require me to be remote and that's a violation of my civil rights as a student in the school to have access to education. I'm, I'm reaching, but, but I want to make sure we, I got to make sure I, I got that out. We require them to be remote if they're, if they have been exposed to COVID. So we, we do limit them from being coming to school already. And I'm not saying don't propose it. I'm not saying don't move it forward as an option. I just would say that we should just double check to make sure that we don't, because um, I, I do like yeah. it. If it, if it allows you know people in that way, um, that's a good idea. But um, well, if they play sports, then maybe they. Can all right, can we, can we the mute on? Uh, let's see. What are they fucking paid college athletes? All right, come on, guys, please. All right, go ahead. Who is speaking? Darius, sorry. I, well, I was just, yeah, just summing up that if you want to make that as part of a proposal and stuff, I, we certainly, and I can look into make sure that we're, um, we're okay there. But I think it's a, it's a nice idea. And I'm not trying to shut down the idea. I'm just saying we just make sure that we're not, um, yeah, my job is making sure we don't get ourselves in any trouble with our ideas. <laughs> so, but I think it's a good idea. It solves a problem. Um, and, and as I uh, go through these, I, I'm trying to go by the hands and the participants for who's next, but I, I, I think Keith was going to ask a question. I want to defer to um, school committee members and Board of Health members as well. So, Keith, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I apologize. I couldn't raise the electronic hand. I just wanted to, you oh. asked me feedback. I just wanted to say quickly that when I began teaching coaching 20 years ago, the advice was given to me, the philosophy that our job, as, as especially as educators, was to provide us with Could I ask people to, to uh, mute, please? There is a, someone on the phone um, that needs to mute, please. Thank you. That number 413-427-5656, can you please mute? The host of the meeting can mute them. Yep, I'm doing that. I'm gonna mute Thank you. everybody I can. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, it was to provide, provide as many opportunities for students as possible. And that's kind of been my approach since the summer. And But the underlying thing is how do we safely provide as many opportunities for kids as possible? The, the basic thing we can do is we shut everything down, go remote, we can do that. But then from there, what steps can we take to provide as many opportunities as safely as possible? And I think the district has demonstrated that they have taken it very seriously in coordination with boards of health, in coordination with select boards, to, to try to provide as many opportunities to safely come into the building as possible. And they've done that. And, I, and I've trusted the, the administration that they can continue doing that. Uh, the dates for uh, what we're looking at reopening in January are right around the same time that the fall, uh, sorry, winter sports would begin that the MIA has pushed it back to. So we'll be looking at kind of bringing them on all at the same time. So I would advocate for trying to provide as many safe offer opportunities for kids to participate as possible. Thank you, Keith. Um, Let's see. So uh, I did call on Christina's Christine's phone a while back. So if, if you'd like to um, to go All ahead right. and ask a question, yep. Can Thank you hear? Can you hear me? I'm not. I'm not yes. the Zoom person. So no I problem. Do no problem. So I don't think you can, you can see me, but I think you can hear me. Nope. Okay. I, I um. You know. I have to say, you have to. 
I, I, I've been working since the outbreak of COVID. So my comments might shock someone differently who has been home, you know, who's, who hasn't really gone out. I've been doing it safely. I've had COVID tests. We wear masks, you know, we do all these things and, you know, I work in healthcare and, and we haven't, luckily have not been, we haven't had any outbreaks. So the, a couple of things I want to bring up is that my son's a senior and he missed out on fall sports, but he desperately, desperately loves basketball. Like this is, the, this is their year, you know, they've gotten so much taken away from them. And I've yep. seen basketball safely happen all year. Like AAU, these things are all still happening. Um, you know, one of my son's good friends is at NMH. They get tested every two weeks. You know, if you go to private schools, you can play basketball. I don't know how. Does anybody know how they're doing it? And that we can't do that? <laughs> it's money, really. It comes down to the testing is like 75 bucks a whack. And it, it just gets- No, so, I have one of the worst insurances I, to, I, I, I'm not even kidding. I just called them and they said, due to COVID, like I have like a $7,000 deductible, um, <laughs> you know, like I pay less per month, but I, when my services come up, you know, I pay for them. You pay for it regardless. But anyway, my point in telling you that is I wanted to see about the COVID testing yeah. and I have a zero copay, um, unlimited amounts of tests because of the pandemic. So okay. maybe we can reach out to some of these insurance companies. Or, I mean, I, I don't want anybody to have to pay for it, but if these kids want to play, you know, I work at CVS, yep. we could get testing. I can set up these kids for tests every two weeks. Like I'm pretty sure that if you, the same thing with all these kids, they, if they want to play, I'm pretty sure they're going to do everything they can to yep. stay safe. They don't make it even safer. Like they might say, hey guys, let's go out on Friday night. They're like, no, you know what? I have a basketball game this weekend. I can't go out. I, you know, you know what I mean? It might spark up a little bit more safety in general. These are just thoughts I have. I mean, I like, they, they I, do, um, they, I just want to mention that the school is participating in the antigen testing. Um, we're hoping to have the training. I don't know, Darius can probably, and Meg can probably address this, the timeline better, but um, we're hoping to have this done um, by, Christmas vacation. So when the school opens back up in January, we can have um, preventative screening of, you know, the antigen tests. Yeah. So, I mean, these are all things to consider. Um, I, I, I know, but I mean, we're looking at these teams and maybe the what, 10, 15 kids in a team, maybe having a parent liaison where they can help out. And I'm sure like I would, I, anybody, any parent of a kid who wants to play will do their best to make sure that they can help out. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I look, listen to the hockey parents and, you know, they you, they drive everywhere. Ba basketball parents, they drive, we've been driving, every, I mean, everywhere to take our kids, I think to save their senior year for basketball. I, I think that's safe to say that a lot of people would do what they can to have their kids play. You know, the wiping down the balls, the social distancing, they wear their masks. You know, whatever, whatever it is, I, I don't even know if anything that I would say would change people's minds, but no, just it's your voice. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, Glenn Dulet, you had your hand up as well. If you want to unmute. unmute yeah, just, thanks. Thank uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to give my sense. Um, sure. I joined this late and um, just wanted to put my two cents in. I, um, I'm the athletic director down at West Springfield High School. Um, have uh, had the experience of living through this as everyone else uh, through the fall. Um, I take uh, great guidance and great um, um, with the sports medicine committee that the MI put forth. You know, as a bunch of professionals, much more smarter than myself. And, and look at DEA guidelines to try to make this the most safest environment possible for our athletes, for our student athletes. And I can attest, you know, um, that when they're with us, meaning the, our coaching staff and, and the coaching staff, I, I feel that things are, are the safest. It's, it's when they leave us, mm -hmm. that that's the biggest concern. And with that being said, I, I think that you know, procedurally, you know, as if the school committee approves sports, I can only speak for the practice that we were looking at and what I went through in the fall is, you know, our demographics where I work are, are, are awful, much worse than here 
and it was a week to week proposition. You know, we had to pivot, as you say, and go practice only because we were worried about the rates within other communities. We had to, and our coaches were great, you know, and the whole underlying principle with that is kids had the experience to participate and socialize um, and, and be with each other and do something that they love um, and, and having that opportunity. And it was us as administrators, parents, that had to ensure that this is gonna be the safest environment. And when, we, and when we saw that things needed to change, we did so. Okay, we pull it back a little bit. And I think the PVIC is supporting that philosophy by giving us the flexibility to adjust our schedules. To The demographics are awful. That's why we adjusted the, start, the season start from December 14th to, to January 4th. And as recently as today to, 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 to the 11th, to give those communities a chance to figure out, does this work? How's it gonna make it work? How can we do this safely for our athletes? Because we want to provide them the best experience, those seniors, those juniors, because this is part of our education. And the school committee, you know, supporting that and putting that trust back into the Board of Health and into that safety committee or, ho or however you work it, making those decisions, those day-to-day -day deci decisions, I think that's the, the, the process that works and has, has proven to work. And, I, I, I think some of the feedback, Ms. McFarland, uh, um, you know, we want to give the kids the opportunities to do things within reason, within safety. Ms. Roberts was saying, you know, the remote aspect of it. You know, I've lived through it. Thank, you know, we've been remote, unfortunately. We haven't had an opportunity to do what Frontier's doing. And in that environment, if there was a question, I wasn't worried about the school population, that English class with that one kid or, or person and, and, and doing the backtracking for 48 hours of who they had contact with. It was contained to that team in theory and that family of that of that player. So I think looking at all your options is, is something that is uh, in the best inter interest of our student athletes. And just to make a broad decision right now of yes or no, I think is an injustice. I think we have to look at the data. I think we have to look at what the professionals are saying and give our give it a look. Um, that's just my two cents. Uh, thank you for um, letting me speak, and uh, I put it back all to you. Great, Thanks, very valuable. Glenn. Thank you. Thank you for that point of view. Um, let's see. So I'm going to lower that. And um, uh, Haley has had her hand up for a while. I'm just trying to get the ones that have been up for a long time, and then kind of rotate. So. Uh, this is Jay Niles. I'm on my daughter's account, but uh, oh. <laughs> hey, Jay. Hey, hey, Trevor. Hey, uh, quickly. Um, I, I coach soccer. My son's played in probably since COVID started, maybe 60 to 70 hockey and soccer games. Uh, here's just what I would say is that if we can all agree that with kids in hybrid and now going remote is that they need to leave the house. We need to get them outside. The safest place to put them is into controlled environments. And there's nothing more controlled than high school sports. Uh, this is the controlled opportunity to get our kids some sense of normalcy. Uh, what I would just suggest is let's just follow what they do, what MIA is saying out in Boston. Uh, if they're playing basketball, they're playing hockey out east, and the state's saying they can play it, and MIA is saying they can play it, let's not try to reinvent science out here, uh, especially, you know, we have lower rates out here. Uh, the other thing I would just say is just having a lot of experience with this and, and ex extrapolate on what Mike Puzak was saying with the bubble and what I think Olivia was maybe commenting on and what does that mean? Uh, just having a lot of experience in, in the early days of this where there was COVID coming out in basketball and hockey, what they really figured out was this was all, a lot of this was all happening at tournaments when they had locker rooms open and mm -hmm. when the kids were in the hotels. So it was a social aspect and it was unventilated lockers. Uh, this stuff isn't passing on the court and it's not passing on the ice. Uh, anyone watch a, a game nowadays, the players not only have masks underneath their shields, but they have face shields, mm -hmm. they have gloves. So they almost look like they're going to the ER. Uh, so this stuff is really, they've, the state's learned a lot and they've changed a lot of policy. Early on, they tried changing the, the sport itself. Uh, and then they realized, hey, we've changed the sport itself. We never closed the locker rooms down. Uh, we never put mandates in place for hotels or who could travel to a tournament. And a lot of the bad stories that got the press had nothing to do with the sport on the ice or the court or the field. Uh, so I just want to say, if we all can agree that the kids have to get out, the controlled environment is the best way to go. These kids are bubbled with their teammates. 
That's what the bubble means. You're bubbled with your teammates in practice. And as long as you control the locker room and you control the socializing, you can control that. Uh, and when you go to away games, you're not going to pass it on the court or the ice. You're going to pass it because you're going out partying after, or you're in a bus after, or you're in a, or, you know, you're in a tight car after. So anyways, just consider it. Uh, we got to get the kids out and it's a safe way to do it. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, Richard uh, Widmer, I think, had, had his hand up for a long time. Richard, are you available? Hey, thanks. Um, I wanted to just also very briefly, I'm a parent to uh, uh, a student and an athlete at your school and just wanted to mainly, I, I like what Jay just said. Um, you know, my son has been out there competing in basketball and soccer and, you know, the teams have been re very resilient to making modifications to keep everybody safe. Um, and it's been remarkable to see how a large AAU program can continue to go to tournaments and have everyone come home safe the whole season. Um, you know, um, and then um, just also wanted to really extend appreciation to Darius and George and Carl and Scott for the really good, positive, timely communication that I get from the school and the school district. It's really helpful for me. And also I see that you guys are like on it, you know, tasked you guys, Philip and Missy and, and, and Carolyn and, and you Trevor and everybody else, Damien, that you are tasked with this decision and Keith and you're making this decision. And I appreciate being included in the conversation. And I appreciate this, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, William Smith uh, had his hand up as well. Yeah, um, my concern oh. here is that we're uh, a month, well, we're a month and a, and a day away from the first practice if I was following Carl's timeline here. The first practice would be January 11th. First games would be the 21st. If you take a look back to where we were in terms of the metrics a month ago on November 10th to December 10th, there's been a a huge change in the metrics because of the 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 surge from everybody's Thanksgiving frolics. The the the, the surge was incredible. I, I believe we're going to experience that same surge again in Christmas because Christmas is as near and dear to people as Thanksgiving is, maybe more so. Maybe it's premature at this point. Because the, the thing that I fear most is that yes we are, no we're not. Yes we are, no we're not. And we're 30 days away from even practicing, never mind playing. So I wonder if we're just being a little bit premature. I'd rather wait a couple of weeks to make a decision on winter sports rather than to say, yeah, we're good to go in two weeks. No, we're not. And two weeks after that, well, yes, we are. Because I th that, that's excruciating for kids. It's excru excruciating for all of us. But I'd rather not do that. And I'm not sure being 31 days out from even practice, with the exception of uh, the female athlete on the co-ed hockey team, we're, we're uh, 31 days out from even practicing. So maybe we have the luxury, if you want to call it that, of being able to wait just a little while longer to see how some of this is going to play out. Well, what I think what neat people are talking about here is that um, we need to stabilize the numbers in our community and we need to adjust our metrics because again, the metrics, all this, the numbers that we had come up with um, we're during the summer before we really understood where we are. And um, also as a community, we need to stabilize again, our numbers. The, there is no transmission in the school. The parents have been responsible. Parents need to continue to be responsible. Um, and we ho hope the community will step up and so we don't have a Christmas surge. Like I said, I was very worried about Halloween. It didn't happen. We had this huge surge from Thanksgiving. We can not, we can stabilize our numbers and make a decision if we are all responsible. We are all in this together and we need to act responsibly as a community so our kids can stay in school and they can play sports. And I think that's the bottom line there. Thank you. Um, Caitlin Rock, you have your hand up. I think that's the last one with a hand up at the moment. So go ahead, Caitlin. Me too, I would like to speak oh, again. Okay, after. Yeah, so I'll just, Caitlin, and I'll come to you. All right. Yeah. Hi, sure. Um, I just wanted to, to mention, I've been listening now for uh, over an hour, and um, I, I am, 
very pleased to hear this amazing debate happening and these wonderful parents speaking out and the thoughtfulness and everything that's going into this discussion and bringing in the idea of how you're managing um, with, you know, how everyone's bringing in ideas on how to keep the kids safe and how important it is to have them have the experience of in-person sports and, um, you know, have, have sports as being an experience. What um, concerns me though, is that the, we have all the school boards here and they're all very thoughtfully discussing and debating this, yet we, there's, when I look through my Facebook and I'm talking as a parent now, not as a board of health member, and I have the knowledge from being on the board of health in Sunderland, so I have, you know, the data knowledge and I have the numbers. I know that our numbers are low. I know that there's no school transmission and I know a school's a safe place. And we're not having the same debate about having the school not in remote education. And you all are debating having sports and having an amazing debate and an intelligent debate. And I think that we're missing the boat completely. And I'm gonna bring it right back around to, you can't have the school closed. And it, it, when you look at my Facebook and I've heard people talking and I can't, I'm, I can't validate this, but it would equal to if the coaches and the refs decided they don't want to have sports and they told the school they don't want to have sports then you guys wouldn't be having this debate and that's pretty much what's happened in the schools is one part of the schools decided they don't want to have in-person school and now we're all stuck and that's not right so I don't think we should even be here. You should even be here debating because as long as the schools are remote, the kids shouldn't be getting together because if it's not safe for the schools to be in person, then it's not safe for the kids to be in person. And that's um, as a parent. So I would um, just push back on that a little bit and just say, um, I, you know, you make valid points that, yeah, if we're not at school, why are we doing sports that, you know, that, that's one thing, but um, I don't think there's one uh, section of the school that's forcing us to close. I think, I think, you know, we, we set metrics and we felt, you know, that, that um, we told the community and, and our parents and, and our staff that if, if we went over that in Franklin County, we were going to take a pause in, until we got our hands around it. So, um, what, what hands? Different, do different things. What hands? What so hands? When, when what we hands can around realize, it? When we can realize we know where the transmissions are coming from and we know that we have them under control. And I think we've had that for the last few months. In the last couple of days, I felt a little bit more as a board of health member seeing the numbers coming through and not having a full grasp on where those infections are coming from and where we can, and we have them stopped. So you don't, um, your community tracing doesn't know where your cases are coming from yes we do. do but they're coming so fast and furious that it's very difficult to have a grasp on where they're coming from and I, you know and and when you have say as i said earlier where you have one case with or say one household with three different tests pending from three different interactions you don't have just one person coming in you know that we know had made a mistake or caught it somewhere and brought it home so it's a little different than um, you know, what, what I've seen monitoring this for the last several months, um, the last couple of days have felt quite a bit different to me. And I think it was safe enough to, you know, to take a minute and figure out truly where these cases are coming from and that we completely have our grasp on it um, before we open back up again. Whether we shut down today or 
you know, in a couple of days or, um, or, you know, we felt we could open in a week from now. I, you know, I think the decisions made that we're going to come back on the fourth and, you know, I think I, I'll, I'll support that decision, but um, I don't think it's one aspect that's forcing down our, our schools. It's that we need to really get our hands on where these, where this massive uptick is coming from in cases and, you know, just address those as quickly as we can. So respectfully, we can I disagree because I don't see a massive uptick in the towns well, that we're talking about. Yeah, my my inbox has been get a whole lot more than it, it has been in the last ten months. Like just in the last two days, three days. Your inbox so. from where? My inbox from Maven. So. Yeah, yeah. and so. it's it, and it is the Thanksgiving uptick, and we knew oh, that, and we right. anticipated it. But but again until we know that that is leveled off and is not infecting our, our school community, I'll feel more comfortable about getting the kids back in school. I think we can agree, person. I think we can agree, Caitlin and Trevor, that we are monitoring them. We are on top. I can say, honestly, we are on top of them. It's yes. just it's shocking. I went to bed last night at 10 of 10. At 5 of 10, there, a case came in. At 1018, a case came in, and then at 138, and then like 418, then you know. So when I woke up this, you know, this morning at six, you know, it we had a lot of action, and that was more than we've had in the in a long time. Uh, I, like that. So while I understand uh, that, I I just think I that it's not affecting the schools. It is. I think, it isn't. I think to write off an in-person no. education so easily is. Okay, and the only be, thing I can spend say, two hours discussing, uh, you know, basketball and hockey. I, it, it I, seems I understand. It disheartening, I understand, but at least. I when I when I say that there is no, um, we're not having transmission in the schools. I I, I personally know that because I am tracking down every single thing that comes in my, my inbox, like Trevor I said. I am too. And I know where everybody, it's just that when it, the number is so large, it's hard to stay on top. And I think that's where we're all a little nervous. And so taking a break, we might, these numbers might all of a sudden just dry up. And, you know, we could, I could be talking to Darius um, Monday or Sunday night and say, Darius, we just haven't had any and we, we can open the schools. I would encourage opening the schools again. Um, but we do have to adjust our metrics because the metrics again, do not necessarily, I think they're artificially low get, uh, given where we're going into the winter. I, I, I would be very discouraged if we stayed closed for the rest of the winter just because we're above 3% positivity rate. Um, I agree. That's not realistic. It's it's the number. It's is transmission happening in the schools. Is is the cases affecting the schools, or are they? Is it just community spread? So I mean, I I am for adjusting that metrics at least to five percent or six percent, something like that. That is realistic and gives us a little bit of wiggle room. Because like I said, if there was one or two cases in the school, that's to me, we shut down. But right. it's Transmission again is not happening in the schools, and the schools to me are safe. And and uh, but I understand people's concern, and I I'm thoroughly back um, Darius's um, um, action on this because we did say this is what we were going to do if the situation arose, mm -hmm. and we have not adjusted it, and we need to adjust it, but we had not have that chance yet. Right. I don't know if Meg wants to right. say anything about um, the, the conditions that might um, be changed in a future date. Is Meg still online? Uh, she might not be on the line. No, I, I am still online. I'm sorry, Carolyn. I've been, I've actually been multitasking um, to clarify information that was contact tracing. Yep the meeting has been going on. So um, repeat what wanna, you want me to speak to if you don't mind. Well, it's, it's just that Meg, you, you represent the school nurses 
And so yeah. you you know how um, on top of everything the school nurses have been. You know the public health nurses. You know what we as Board of Health have been on top of. Um, we talk uh, sometimes multiple times during the day. Um, I don't think people understand how much time we say um, engaged in trying to make sure we know where everybody um, that had some kind of exposure got that exposure from and that there was no chance that it gets into the schools. Right. So if you right. want to just talk about that and. Some yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think it is clear. I mean, at this point, there's not been, when I've talked to the public health nurses, there's not, kids, kids and, and transmission in school have not been implicated in, in the cases. Um, I think the issue though was that we had gone, you know, as Darius talked to early in the meeting, we had gone beyond um, the metrics that we had established and, and all of the metrics that we had established, um, except for the tertiary ones that were internal. Um, so I think, you know, I think the metrics don't capture the context and they don't, um, they don't reflect what is happening in the school. They're much more reflective of happen of what's happening in the community. Yeah. Um, but the numbers, you know, the numbers that we've been seeing are are high, and the percent positive is high. And um, so, it, in terms of moving forward, I think what I want to really look at is. Um, what is a better indication of the risk? What is, what is a better way to do a risk assessment in terms of the in-person learning? Um, and um, what, what would that look like in terms of hard data that we would want to have access to? And, and really it's gonna be what's available um, and what can we, um, how, how, how can we appropriately interpret that data? So, um, I, th I think we need to, you know, I think some of some some indicators are going to stand um, as sort of thresholds that say what's happening here. We need we need to we need to understand the context. We need to understand where these cases are coming from. Um, we need to understand the level of risk, and um, and then I think we need to we need to sort of reconsider how how we identify indicators that reflect what is actually happening in our schools. Right. Um, other area schools um, as well. And that's that's trickier when you're one of the few schools that's been doing in-person learning. True. So I think we have I think we have some serious work ahead of us. Yep. I mean, not not like we haven't been doing serious work since yeah. March, but Thank I don't you. know if that answers what if that sort of speaks to what you were looking for, Carolyn. I think yes. it, it does. I just want people to be aware that we need to, to make some adjustments um, going forward. I understand I'm on the fence myself because the numbers uh, in the community are rising so uh, rose so fast um, and continue to rise. And it's it's really only been the last three or four days, but the last three or four days have been really unbelievable. Um, you know, so I am on the fence because at some point I can't guarantee that they're not getting into the schools. And then I, then I am uncomfortable myself, but. Up and I understand that I am kind of the voice of opposition here and I get that. And that's, and I feel that that's okay because I'm only one twelfth of a board of health and I am a voice of a parent and being and feeling scared and uncomfortable, I feel is appropriate in a pandemic. I still don't think until the community, until school spread is equal to or higher than community spread, the school should not be remote. And that's my feeling and my belief. And I'm not saying it should be anybody else's feeling and belief but I do think that it's something that needs to be said. No, it's perfect. I'm glad you said it. And I think really what a lot of, you know, what we're grappling is, is we set these, these, these uh, parameters for our community 
and we said that we would, when we cross them, that we would pause and, and address that. And I think what we've learned, uh, Caitlin, you've probably learned a, a ton more than me at this, is that um, now that we've matured with this pandemic, we, we see things a little differently than we did when we set the parameters and that maybe, and as Carolyn said, they need to adjust to really reflect what's going on in the school and, and that community versus the larger community. I mean, they are related, obviously, because it, you know, we have these community things happening that it winds up in the school. And we just don't, we just don't want a spread to happen. So we're like, you know, jumping the gun to kind of slow down until we really kind of figure this thing out and maybe adjust those, those parameters so that it isn't, you know, it isn't stopping us from moving forward when we really truly see that the spread isn't in the school. It's and I would be the first as a board of health to vote for all sports to be, I mean, I think sports are the most, probably one of the most important parts of academics mm -hmm. because you can't have a body without a, a mind without a body and a body without a mind. It just, they yep. go hand in hand and they yep. teach teamwork and ethics. And I, I mean, sports, maybe it's because I was an athlete way back, all right, 30 years ago. We're not going to get into that, but uh, it's ingrained in me and I love it. <clears throat> and I'm the, I'll be the first one waving every flag, but I just wanted equitable. Okay. Thank you. Um, Driver. Driver. Uh, yes. Can I, can I try of course, in, of course um, chair. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we, um, we've had a lot of talk about this tonight and yep. I really think that unless, and, and I, I'm going to make a motion that we table this until January 5th, when we do have our next school committee meeting which will still give us enough time. Um, sorry about the dog. My wife's well, coming home. Bob, we, like we're going to have Actually, a Actually, Bob, Bob yeah. can we invite you to yeah. our um, already posted December 29th meeting? Would you be willing to come to our December 29th meeting? We, we as the Board of Health, we're going to review um, the opening of schools on January 4th. Yeah, I mean, that's close to January 5th. I'm just thinking when the kids are, hopefully the kids are back on the 4th, unless the numbers change for the worse. Um, I'm, you know, I'm all well, for the 29th. Yeah. What I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping having a public discussion, people in the community will um, take a, a step back and um, be very vigilant and wear their masks and socially distance and, and do everything they can so that we can open the schools um, on the 29th and we can vote um, the sports situation, you know, the sports um, on the 29th. Um, I, I feel like most of the hesitation and Darius' decision, um, uh, we'll, hopefully we'll have some newer metrics by then as well, but Darius' decision um, was made on metrics that we had already established and, and we do really have community spread at the moment. So if we have um, the ability to go to the 29th, that would be very helpful. Mm. Can I get another school committee member to chime in to of course. agree or disagree with us at all? Yeah, well, uh, Missy Novak has got her hand up and I know she's a member and same with Damien. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So Missy? Sorry, hang on, just had to unmute. Um, I was wondering if in the meantime, if we're going to put this off, I was wondering if um, Darius and Carl, there might be some wisdom in seeing what happened after Thanksgiving, looking into whether or not we're able to set up some sort of intramural situation where we can afford these kids an opportunity to be active and play in some sports uh, without bringing in other communities and trying to keep that risk as low as we can and also satisfy the needs for everybody to be active. Hey, that, you're gonna talk or you're me, you or me, Carl? You go first. I was only gonna say that the, we're also looking at doing some other things as well because I think the isolation from um, not just the winter but the remote settings um, is a concern to us. I, I have you know, huge concerns about the mental health of our students um, all the way through, pre-K all the way through. Um, you know, I was on a meeting yesterday with the Commissioner of Education and, um, you know, I, I believe that the, the Board of Pediatrics is going to be making an announcement about a crisis and, and uh, 
in uh, youth mental health um, because of the COVID um, thing that the emergency room visits for mental health issues are up 31%. Um, and so I think we need to be start doing more about getting kids um, active, even if they chosen a remote setting, um, if they need to do that, can we do some kind of um, bringing kids together in a different kind of format? Um, Carl did put a list of different ideas that he started putting together on the last page there. And I'll say them out loud for people listening, um, but we can do running clubs in the winter, um, Zumba, either socially distanced or virtual yoga. We have a do a yoga instructor in our school who does a good job with that, you know, spreading out, doing that social distancing in the gym, um, you know, different kind of Zoom workouts, um, small pods and weight rooms, co-ed volleyball, and then um, ski club is something we've run every year. We're trying to figure out a way how we can get the kids to the mountain to do that. Um, and really just kind of pushing and any other ideas people can come up with. So um, that's in our, it's in our, it's in the kind of the burner right now to do. Um, I would agree to what Caitlin said earlier. I'm not sure I can be bringing students to the building um, right now when we just closed because they do a higher numbers, um, unless we can do something, I guess on the lines of where it's very safe, like a running club, or we know that there's not gonna be, you know, you know increased transmission there. So Carl, did I, Say what you were going to say. Maybe it took all the fun for you. Yeah, you did such a good job. No wonder they hired you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, I would just add, I certainly, uh, if, if I guess that I would say, if the hang up in terms of sports has to do with going to other schools, which I totally understand, I, I certainly would be, be um, capable and willing to create a frontier like. Um, intramural basketball kind of small league where they have a couple practices a week and we only play with frontier people. Uh, if that is something that um, people were in favor of, um, you know, and the other things that Darius had lifted off um, because Missy, like you said, that, that might take out some of the risk, but still give the kids something they need. Um, so, you know, I'm for whatever, whatever the, the committees decide and, and um, ways to get the kids moving and, and, healthy mentally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking, I know that I've heard a few people talk about how we are safer here in Western Mass, but uh, I'm pretty sure Bay State has the most COVID patients of any hospital in Mass right now, which um, uh, raises some concerns about how safe we are out here in Western Mass. Mm -hmm. So Tre Trevor, at the same time though, Trevor, the, the one thing that I would like to push back on is a little bit of um, the whole notion of uh, of once this, you know, if sports are up and running, that if you choose to play them or a particular sport, you might be forced to go remote against your will. Um, and and I just the, the only the only reason I say that is because the it, the rationale to that just falls apart under when, when you look at it because you 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 have all these parents that are already right now their kids are right now today tonight we're all over God's green earth playing club sports. And, and so, I mean, if you're going to say they're going to have to go remote because you're going to change them from club sports to a safer, uh, even better environment of regulated high school sports, that once they get to those safer environments, okay, you got to go remote when right now, well, they're remote, but right now, prior to today, um, the, the, that was all fun. So to, to me, I, uh, it, it also had a slight odor of punitive aspect to it. I don't know, just, you know, the, the, it, th that was just uncomfortable. So I would just like to hopefully really take a look at that proposed policy. Thanks, Bill. Um, before we go, um, um, Carl did mention that there was the one um, young lady who played hockey and that she has a December 14th um, start time. I, since the school is already remote, I, I just want to say if, as a Board of Health member, um, I certainly would feel comfortable allowing her to play. I, I don't know it, what formal vote we have to say on that. I don't think we have she's one. Probably on already, she's probably already playing. <laughs> yeah. If she's I on a club team, she's playing already. Actually, so formally the school committee um, would would have to vote to approve that sport for this summer, this this winter. If you're gonna, if you're not, if you're gonna have likely un, not approve any sport, then you got to go and approve every sport moving forward. Just as a formality, you can't just say you can go. Do, we're just not gonna do any action here, and therefore it happens. So I think the school, the Frontier School Committee, should make a motion to allow girls ice hockey co-op to go forward um, at this time. 
that's what you want to do. And then you have a vote. And then the other ones are tabled into a, a further discussion, if that's, if, that's, if that's the will of the committee. I, I was going to jump in. That's really what I had my hand raised for. Okay. Um, and really also for clarification. If you want to just do it with ice hockey, girls ice hockey, we can do it that way. I was really just going to push to make things simpler. If we just vote to proceed with winter sports and just make one clean vote, uh, if, if the Board of Health is meeting December 29th um, to, and, and school is scheduled to start January 4th, just because we vote tonight to proceed with winter sports doesn't necessarily mean winter sports are going to start. Uh, all that is, is it allows Carl to plan. It allows Darius to plan. It allows parents to plan. But if the numbers continue to go up, the Board of Health is going to step in and shut things down. Um, I, so I, I don't see really what the harm, if, if, if the consensus is we wait till later to make an official vote, I guess that's what the consensus is. But I don't really see the harm in even voting tonight to proceed with winter sports just for the planning of it. Just like Deerfield Elementary planned for phase three, yet it's actually not going to start. Um, so I, I, I guess if that helps people plan, I, I don't see the harm in in doing it because really practice is not going to start. I think what Carl said until January 11th with, with competition, not starting till January 21st. So if we, if we vote to just move forward with it, it doesn't really necessarily mean it's going to start. And I even say we have a meeting, our frontier meeting could actually change our vote on January 4th and, and then retract our vote. I, so I, I don't know. That's my, Kind of. I, I think you're. I, I think it's a good point, Damien. The only thing, I, and I think I would also say is that we had a long debate tonight. Mm -hmm. You're going to repeat the debate if you don't make a decision. You know what I mean? So it, yeah. I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Also interesting to see where people stand. I, I don't know. I just think I think you put a good point because if you're moving forward there, you can always pull it back. I guess. I, yeah. And I think the Board of Health is probably, you know, we'll we'll take a back seat and wait and make our decision, you know, on the 29th. But I think, you know, I think it it's the it's the Frontier School Committee that that really has the seat of the vote on this issue. So since I still kind of have my my uh, hand up here, I'm making a vote a motion to proceed with winter sports. Second, second. Hey, give me a second. Am I on mute? No, I'm not. Yeah, we're going to have a so we got a motion in a second yeah and and we have lynn that has i see your hand lynn so we know lynn has a question before we do any vote okay yep, lynn, you wanna, there, trevor is okay lynn, lynn, yes lynn, please because I, I don't see her on the list but yes if you see somebody that needs it let I, me know yep. she was raised she's on my screen there's only four people on my screen i've Google. only got like four or five at the top so yeah, well, please help. Yep. Well, Lynn, Lynn, why don't you why don't you chime in, Lynn? Thanks. Um, Damien, I just want to check to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. That you want us to vote to start winter sports so we look good, and then we hope that the Board of Health vote to cancel it all, and so they look bad and we don't. Is that basically what you're saying? We don't mind. No, I, I think you're twisting. I think you're twisting with the way that I'm, I'm, I, I'm meaning that. I'm not, I do not mean to make us look good and they look bad, no. What I'm saying is to put a vote in place with the hopes that the numbers do go down. They probably won't, but if they do, and the Board of Health says school can start back up on January 4th, they can also discuss whether sports are safe to start. If, if sports are not safe to start, just because we vote tonight for Carl to help with planning for, what, whatever, for whatever the process is to proceed with sports in the hope that they might, they might get going, it doesn't mean by us voting tonight that they won't 
that, th that that decision can't be changed. It's not, it's not to make us look good. No, I mean, I, if, if you're interpreting it that way, I apologize. And my, my motion to do that and my vote to do that is not to make us look good and make the Board of Health look bad. Uh, it has no, uh, I, I don't know what else to say that that's not my intention for that. Uh, my intention is to plan for, plan for the best and hope for the best. And if things change, we can always retract our vote later. That, that's my intention with the motion. Well, anyway. mm -hmm. And that's, that, that's, that's it. Is that, is that the answer to your question, Lynn? Sorry, Keith, you'll be next. Yeah, I guess I don't understand why Carl can't plan regardless of if we vote or not. I mean, man still has a computer and a telephone. He can still plan all he wants. I'm not sure why his his schedule for the week is determined by what we vote tonight or if we vote tonight. I mean, personally, I'd rather put it off a little bit and see how the numbers wash Any other members want to speak to the motion? Oh. You see you vote? Oh. Forever, uh, Missy, Missy had her hand raised. Oh, I haven't seen it, but go ahead. Yep. Thanks, that's okay. I know there's a lot of screens and not everybody <laughs> sees the electronic hand raising. I'm Bob, I know you're, you know, you're old school with a hand. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I think just before we vote, I, my consideration always is in what kind of message we're sending to the community, what kind of, what kind of activities and what kind of permission do they see as part of our vote. Um, you know, I, I think that 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 has some real wisdom to keep that in mind, especially in what we've seen with Thanksgiving, if we are looking forward and just doing a vote to say let's do these athletics so that Carl can can schedule and, and plan what kind of message are we sending that you guys should all plan on getting together and having your sports just like normal in the face of when we all just went remote because these cases are rising and everybody's anticipating that they'll continue to rise does that mean that people use this kind of logic to plan holiday parties and get-togethers and you know not everybody but you know this it's important to keep it. Call mind. me later. Okay. Trevor, you can mute her. Yes, I did. Yep. Oh, good. Thanks. Does any other school committee members want to say anything? Just come on. I I don't have the hand, and Trevor. So you see um, else? Yep. I don't. It's Olivia. I don't know. <laughs> um, I finally have video and, and voice now. Um, so I just, I don't know if this is the right time to say this, but I have been contacted by a number of people. Um, and I know some things have been sent to Darius um, and around letters of parents who are um, very concerned um, about people spending a lot of time indoors, running around, breathing heavily with people from other schools. And I feel like um, what Missy said is very important to remember is what we say now is it's not just Carl planning. Um, he's doing a wonderful job and I totally trust our schools to keep us safe, you know, and um, even when I ask for clarification on how we're going to do that, it doesn't mean I don't trust them or think they're wonderful. Um, but I do think that we need to be very mindful of the fact that it won't just be Carl and Darius planning. It's going to be lots of people. They're getting their skis ready. They're getting ready for basketball. They're getting shoes. They're thinking about what's coming up and then um, to decide afterwards, you know, it, it's, just, it's just, it's hard. So just keeping mindful that what we say is really impacting the next few weeks um, where we're already remote because it's not safe to even be in a room um, not laughing or breathing or exerting yourself with other people. So just trying to be mindful of that. Thanks, Olivia. Thank Trevor, do we have anybody else that has their hand up, do you know? Um, not members for your motion. 
I, okay. I don't believe. I see uh, Amy's phone has her hand up, but I don't think she was a member of the board. So no. I'm happy to take that question. So, oh, Keith just put his hand up. So yeah. I would say that we can, I don't know if we want to add an addendum to the to the motion that, that, that we're trying to preliminary plan was subject to review on the December 27th meeting. 29th. Uh, the 29th. 29th. Yeah. 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 Actually, Since it was my motion, that's fine, Keith. We can we can add that to it. And, and I don't mean to put this all on, on Carl's planning. It, it really is is more just a, a community process to move forward uh, with obviously with the expectation that things can change and it can be retracted. And, and if, if that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a fine addendum and since it was my emotion, I, I don't mind a adding yeah. that to it. So Thanks, you're all good. <laughs> Judy, are you on Judy? You must yeah. be taking on this. Yep. I'm on, but I really, I don't understand what, I mean, I, I understand that you want to sort of say like, Yes, but we could change our mind. That feels like what that's what the motion is or the addendum to the motion because the motion that we're discussing right now is to accept the winter sports proposal as presented, period. Right. So if you're making an amendment, that's the motion you have to make an amendment to which we will then have to vote on the motion to amend mm -hmm. and then vote on the amended motion. Correct. Okay, so who wants to Give me the language that you'd like me to use for the amended first. Keith, you laid it out there. Go ahead. Uh, we are voting to accept the proposal for winter sports begin on January, was it 11th? At this time, yep. At this time, subject to review at the Board of Health meeting on December 27th. 29th. 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 Um, can I ask two, a couple of questions? Sure. So that does not include the the sing, the individual girl that's trying to do the co-op hockey that starts in like two weeks or a week yeah. next week. And it also, can is that a joint board of health meeting? Is that like all the towns or is it just Deerfield? No, this is a four town. We, we had scheduled a four town um, uh, meeting so that we could um, discuss uh, the numbers um, review the metrics, which we hope to have revised by then so we could all vote on them. And then um, um, hopefully open the schools on January 4th. Okay. Is that going to be a joint meeting, Carolyn? Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. It's, it's being posted as a four town board of health meeting right now. And if you would want to post it as a, um, a school committee meeting, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. Ask a clarifying question. Sure. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, with this vote, where does um, the one girl playing hockey stand with this vote? Like, because it has to start before our December 29th meeting. So, where does this vote leave her? I would you, say it's going to go forward. You approved. You approved the uh, start of winter athletics. So she'll be. If you change, if you were to change your decision on the 29th. You would have you'd then be affecting if you let's say you said no winter sports on the 29th. Let's say you know you did, you would either have to make an exception and say accept, or you'd have to say yeah she'd so be pulling her back and say it's now canceled. Okay. So you're right now she's part of the group moving forward and her season starts earlier. Good. And Damien, do you want to second that motion? Yeah, I'll second that motion. Okay. Thank you. We're gonna, are we going to vote on the amendment or are we just having a new motion? We're going to vote on the motion to amend the vote. Amel amend the original motion as presented. And then we're going to vote on the amended motion. Okay. So or the this, amended, this, yeah. Just to let everybody know, this is going to be a weighted vote. So just, you know, when, when Ju Judy. I know Darius is not ready with the numbers you have. I got it. Thing? Yeah, I got, got it from Don, yeah, I got it from Donna today. Okay. 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 You ready? Kids? Go ahead. Phil Cantor. Yes. Missy Novak. Sorry, my mouse, I had to find it. <laughs> uh, yes for the addendum. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Damien. Yes. Olivia. Yes, for the addendum. Uh, Judy, yes. Lynn? Yes. 
Ski? Yes. Bill Smith? No. no. Bob Halla? Yes. Okay, so that passes 5.05 to 0 0.8. Did you call Mary's name? Was Mary here? I didn't, no, I don't see Mary here. Okay. I, no, I'm Mary and Ashley are absent. I'm sorry, I didn't call them because they're both absent. No problem. I'm just, I just wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. Now we get a vote on the motion. Right. So Damien had opened. Yeah. Let's get a let's get a new. Let's get a motion for the amended vote. I'm going to say it, Judy. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Phil. Uh, and this, we're voting on to accept the Frontier Winter Sports proposal subject to review at the Four Town Board of Health meeting on December 29th, 2020. Everybody happy with that? Yeah, okay. Here we go this again. This is also gonna be a weighted vote. This is also a weighted vote, yep. Uh, Phil Cantor. Yes. Missy? No. No. Damien? Damien? Yes. Olivia? No. Uh, Judy? Yes. Lynn? No. Keith? Yes. Bill? No. Bob? Yes. Uh, the motion is 5.5 5 to 4. So it passed? It passed. Okay. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. No, correct that. Elected votes on vote number two is two, yes, and 3.87 for no. So actually it fails because only the elected votes count. Hmm. Say what? In the weighted vote, the elected votes are what count. And not everybody on the Frontier School Committee is elected. The appointments are Bill, you, Mary, Keith, and Bob. I'm not sure you're correct. Is that not correct? No. They're, they're, Why'd she put that on there then? I don't know. It's a total votes. That's why they're weighted. Yeah. Okay. So total votes is five yes, three no. 5.03, 3.87. Thank you, Judy. Okay. Do we need to discuss anything else tonight? Trevor. No, but I, I appreciate everyone's willingness to come to the meeting on December 29th. I think it's very helpful to discuss this. The more more input we have, um, the better everyone feels with the decisions. It's a very grateful very for the whole group to come together and 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 hear from the public and hear from everybody to um, try and work on I this. I just hope the takeaway from this is that the entire community needs to come together and be very vigilant, wear our masks, pay attention, social distance as much as possible, have a happy holiday season, but just be safe. Um, we have to get our numbers down as a community and we need to get our kids back into school. And so it's very critical that people pay attention um, and we need to be safe. I mean, no one wants to know who's going into the hospital next. I mean, this is not good kind of discussions. Mm -hmm. So please everyone be safe, wear your masks, be, be creative like we did for Halloween. We had a safe Halloween and we had no bumps from Halloween. I mean, I still can't even believe it. I was so shocked. I was worried all month. You can ask Trevor, I was talking yes. about canceling Halloween yeah. and you know, people are gonna do it anyway. And you know what, what was the point? I mean, we kept going back and forth, back and forth and people pulled together and it's safe for our kids to stay in school. So we have to do this again. I don't know what happened for Thanksgiving, but um, it was a wreck, train wreck. And we need people to pinch and, and pull together again. 
we can do this so our kids can play sports and they can school. That's all. Just have to say happy holidays too. <laughs> yeah, on that <laughs> note. Be creative. Be creative happy again. Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Yes. Happy holidays. So yeah. I need yep. a motion in a second to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Motion. Thanks, Bill. I'll second it. Bob? Yes. Uh, Lynn? Yep. Bill? Yes. Bill? Yes. Judy, yes. Damien? Yes. There you go. Uh, Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. Olivia? Yes. All right, adjourned at eight o'clock. Trevor, you, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Yes, motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? No. Great, none. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. Be safe, please. All right, yes, take care, everybody.